All right, so I'm going to step through the map design uh, for task four, which was making the map of the hypothetical trip to Europe. Okay, so I have a map uh, already ready that has the data basically symbolized the way that I want. So I've got um, the background, continents, or, or countries uh, there in like a nice tan, just kind of background color. And then for our European countries, I've set up uh, symbology to separate the visited and not visited. So if I go into the symbology options for this layer, we can see this unique values using the visited field and then zero and one, and we're labeling those as not visited and visited. So that's what's gonna show up here in the contents pane and then in the legend once we create the legend. Um, I've also set the background color to blue. Um, to do that, you just go to the object, properties, and then under general, you can set a background color. The default is that it's just transparent. Okay, so that's basically the, the layout. So now I would like to actually make a paper map layout from this. So to do that, I'm going to go to insert tab and then under insert, we can click new layout and then pick a paper size. Note that this isn't that important because you can always just change the paper size later. So I'm gonna go to letter, eight and a half by 11, and I'm just gonna change the size just for the heck of it. So I'm gonna go to properties and then we'll set this to 11 by 11. And again, you can just change that so it, the default setting you pick is you're not stuck with that okay so first thing I want to do is add the map um, object to the layout so to do that I go to insert and then map frame and this should list all the maps that you have available in your current project so this is the one I'm interested in so I'm going to grab that and then I can draw a box to get it to print on the screen Okay, so a couple issues here. First, I think it zoomed out too far, so we need to do something about that. And also, it didn't bring in our background color. So that actually has to be set again here in the layout. All right, so to zoom, you, we have an issue, and that's that now we have two spaces. We have a layout space, and then we have the map space. And we need to be able to navigate within both. So the way Arc, de Arc Pro deals with that is by activating and deactivating the map. So to activate the map, you can right click within it and click activate. So now you can move around in the map space as opposed to like the paper space. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit until I get roughly what I want. Note that I found that this is a bit uh, touchy. So it tends to zoom a good bit. I'm just gonna zoom, there we go. I think that looks good. Okay, so once I get it where I want it, want, I can just simply deactivate it, and now I'm back to moving around within the paper space. Okay, and then to change the background, we have to click on the map frame object over here, open up its properties, and then under this option, it looks like a paintbrush, we can see some settings for the border. So right now it has a, a black border, one point, and um, the background is transparent. So I'm just gonna change the background to a light blue, and that gives us back a blue background. Okay, I think that looks fine. Um, next thing I like to do is add labels. So I wanna specifically just label the European countries. So to do that, I need to turn the labels on. So I'm gonna click on that l l uh, layer and then go to labels. The default labels are generally not great. I had fiddled around with this already a bit. Um, if you want to change it, you can go to label properties and, um, and, and change the label. So for example, under symbology, you can set a font size um, uh, and, and a font. You can change the position. So right now I have it set to remove all. If you click do not remove, it's gonna label once it draws it, it'll label each individual separate polygon of a feature. So we get a lot of duplicate labels. So this remove all was nice because then you just get one label for each feature. Um, okay, and then you can also change the positioning. So if we go to this first object here, right now I have regular placement. Um, you There's other default options. So this is boundary placement. 
So it puts it along the boundaries more, land parcels. I actually think that looks pretty good. Um, there's also, I have it set to horizontal and polygon. If you did straight and polygon, it'll try to label along the long axis. Um, generally, with this use, so Arc, Arc Pro and Arc Map uses this uh, tool called the um, Matplex Labeling Engine to try to um, help with labeling, um, which can do a pretty good job if you know how to do it. If you want to do additional editing, you can always export the layer out as a vector file and then um, do some additional editing in a vector software like Illustrator or Inkscape or something. So I'm going to say that's good enough. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this. And next thing we want to do is add some graticules to the, the map frame. So to do that, I'm going to go make sure that I'm clicked on the map object, and I'm going to go to Grid and then I'm going to add a, gr a graticule grid. And note that it shows up over here as an object in underneath this layout one and also underneath the, the map frame because it's tied to the map frame. Okay, so first off, I think this is labeled, the labels on this are a bit too dense. So I want to make this less dense. So to be able to edit it, you need to turn off this automatically adjust option. And then we can make edits to the labels and the tick marks and the grid lines. So I'm going to set this so I only have a label. Let's just do every uh, 10 degrees. And that automatically syncs that so that they update. They both update. And I'm going to do the same thing with the tick marks, both the, ma oops, both the major and the minor. And then we'll do that also lastly for the grid lines. I think that's good enough. We don't really need a really dense grid here because it's just you know for um, it's it's just the aid in um, understanding where we're at geographically. Okay, um, I think the labels are a little small, so I'm going to go back to label and then click on symbol and properties, and then we're going to change the symbol property. So tome is fine. Let's bump it up to 12. I think that looks pretty reasonable. Some other things you could do if you wanted, go back here, we could change the orientation so we could make um, we can make labels vertical, for example. We could also turn some things off if we wanted. Um, I think we'll just leave that alone for now. I think that's fine. Okay, so we have our map basically the way that we want it. So now we want to add some other map elements. So first I'm going to add a title. So to do that, I need to be under insert and then text. And there's some different options for writing text. So I'm just going to grab this one, which basically allows you to create a text box. I'm going to call that countries visited. Oop try to center that a bit. Okay, cool. Alright, next I want to add in a north arrow, a scale bar, and a legend. So to do that, you want to make sure you're clicked on the map that you want to reference those two. In this layout, we only have one map, so it really doesn't matter, but I'm just going to click on it to, to make that point. So click on that, and then we can go to north arrow and add a north arrow in. Okay, there we go. And now I want to add a scale bar. So I'm just going to grab a scale bar, draw that out, and then we can do some editing. So first off, um, if I go to format, I can change the font. I'm going to change it to Tahoma, and then I'm going to maybe bump it up to 16. Okay, um, we could also change the color if we wanted. We don't really need to, but I'm just going to it. Well, that's too light. Uh, maybe lighten it up a bit. Okay, and then design, we, this, I'm going to change it to kilometer units, and then change the label to KM, and then I'm going to have it position the, the label below and centered. I'm just going to have it mark the divisions, and then I generally try to set this so it's a nice number that it ends on. And I generally just do that by with the size there. 
Maybe we'll bump it down to 2,000. Let's just get away with that. There we go. So 0 to 2,000 kilometers. And then lastly, we need to put in a, a legend. Again, you need to cl be clicked on the map that you want to add the legend for. Insert legend. We'll add in the legend. OK, so this definitely needs some work. Uh, first off, we don't really need to show the world countries. I think that's self-explanatory. And then for the European countries, we really don't need the layer name or the heading. So we just want the, the, the two sets of symbols. I think it could be a bit bigger. So go to Format. And we'll bump the size up to maybe 18. Looks good. And we'll move this over a bit. And then I think I can move this over now. And then move this over a bit. OK, so I think that looks fine. All right, so um, and now I want to maybe save that object out as an actual graphic file. So to do that, I'm going to go up to um, Share and then Layout. And then we'll just call it um, Countries Visited. I'll put a 2 on the end because I'd already made a copy of it. And as you can pick a, um, a, a, a format, I'm just going to do a TIFF. And 300 DPI is generally pretty good. So we'll do an export. And then now if we go to that folder, should be able to see our output in our result. OK, so that's an example of the first map. So in the next, um, next follow-up, I'll do the second map.